Summer has come, and summer has gone. As the autumn season starts, a whole bunch of new anime starts airing as well. As is a way of things, I suppose. But can a new season be as good as the old one? Or will it not live up to the hype? We'll find out in the next few weeks, as I look at some of the new anime which is airing in Japan, and let you know what I think of them, and whether or not I think you should watch them or not. Because, as ever, this is a 2019 autumn anime preview, from a different perspective. Ahiro no Sora is an anime which does things by the book. It's a basketball anime. It's an anime about a young lad joining high school and wanting to join his basketball club. Now, with being a sports anime, and specifically a shonen based sports anime, of course it's going to have to pass through a few hoops first of all. No pun intended. And we start off with one hell of a cliche as our main character is a shorty getting bitten up by delinquents. Yeah. Shonen protagonist, who's a bit of a weakling, check. Next up we learn is the underdog. He's a shorty who wants to play basketball, but he doesn't back down from a fight. So he's a plucky, short kid. Yeah, this is definitely a shonen sports anime. He meets this rather big guy, who's blatantly going to be part of a basketball team, I can tell you that straight away, who likes him. I mean, he's a bit of a slacker. He talks a lot of talk and doesn't really walk the walk so far. Apparently he's a master of all martial arts and can dodge anything except a flying toy plane. But he's definitely got the slapstick in hand as well. But as we get to know our main character Sora, the shorty, we learn that, yep, yeah, he really likes basketball. He's got his favourite pair of trainers, given to him by his mother, who's almost certainly dead, and he puts them on and goes to play basketball the first day of school. Well, why wouldn't you? Unfortunately, the delinquents from earlier are in school as well. And they're also the basketball club. And they lock poor Sora inside the team room. And so he misses his entire day of school. Thankfully for Sora, his big burly friend, Chiaki, turns out his name is, is also in basketball club. And was using it to perv on the girls team next door. Okay, so small guy, angry guy, perv, delinquents. If you've got a scorecard of sporting shown and show cliches, then I think you've probably got a bingo red, haven't you? Because one thing which Aharuna Sora does do is it ticks all the boxes. But is Sora any good at basketball? Of course he's bloody brilliant. He's a short guy who can dance around the basketball court and shoot hoops for the best of them. Not anyone lets him because the delinquents don't want him to play. Because they don't want to play. But of course they will be playing by the end of the anime, you know that for certain. Another thing you know for certain is that one of our main characters, probably Sora, possibly Shaki, is going to end up with a nice girl of a group, Madoka. The girl who pretty much pushes forward everything he's doing in the entire practice game they do. Because this being a show anime, the end of episode one, they have a challenge. Him versus a team. One on five. And of course it's going to win, you know that for certain. And so for all of its box ticking and all of its cliches, is Ahirina Sora any good? Surprisingly, yes. I mean, I'm not a sports anime fan. I watch a fair show, I like a good sports show from time to time. But I don't, I don't go out of my way to watch them. You wouldn't find me watching Croco's Basketball, for example. But this one is actually quite interesting. The main character, whilst he is a bit annoying at times, is interesting. It, He's got a real buzz about him. The big guy with the afro. He is a bit of a perv, but I like the fact he's just a slacker, doesn't want to do anything. The delinquents are delinquents, but let's ignore them. And the girl, Mendoka, she looks generally interesting and she doesn't look like she's better just to be the token female. Although, again, to go by the books, but she probably will be. If you are interested in watching Ahiro no Sora, this one's having both over at Crunchyroll and at High Dive. I hope you like other world anime because today is full of them. The first of which is Kimono Michi Rise Up, an anime where a pro wrestler gets transported to another world. And may I say that this anime is absolutely batshit insane. If you don't believe me, give it a watch. 
You got our main character, Shibata, who is a pro wrestler. Animal Mask, his name is. His gimmick is he wears an animal mask. Yeah, he's a masked pro wrestler. And in the midst of his final fight, he gets teleported to the world. Now, Shibata loves animals. Almost too much to trust me. It's, it's borderline perversion. And it goes beyond borderline throughout the episode. But we'll get to that in a moment. And so he's teleported to another world in the middle of his final fight. He was planning on retiring after this fight anyway, so it was always going to be his final fight. Because he wanted to retire and fulfil his lifelong dream of opening a pet shop. He shouldn't really be licensed for pet shops, but he was opening one anyway. And so he gets teleported to another world in front of this really, really beautiful princess. And she welcomes him, oh hero, who is in his pants. His underwear, in case you're not British. Oh hero, who is in your pants. Welcome to another world. We have summoned you to defeat the Demon King and his myriad of demon beasts. But what would you do if you were an animal lover who got summoned to kill animals? You do what any good, well respected, half naked pro wrestler hero does. You suplex a princess. Yeah. That pretty much leads on to the entire tone for the entire episode. Because the comedy is sort of in your face, as was a princess's crotch as she was suplexed. And what made it more amusing was the fact that it wasn't just a one off, haha, <laughs> she, she got suplexed and here's her panties moment. But just leave her there frozen and her panties just still there. In shock almost. And he ends up just taking his cloak off and just let's cover this girl. Let's clear her name, cover her panties with my cloak. Which makes him even more naked because now he's just wearing his, his, his um, I would call them shorts, but not, what are they when, what pro wear? They're not pants, they're um, not swimming trunks either, but effectively they're, they're budgie smugglers. Budgie smugglers, a mask, boots which look like animal, po animal boots, and a colour, because colour. The rest of the episode takes a place where he's trying to escape the authorities who think he's a pervert, he is. And ends up getting attacked or assaulted or encountering a pair of rather unscrupulous beast people. You got a cat girl, which of course he wants to fuss. And a, a dog man. Beast man. And which one does he go for? The dog man, of course, is more fluffy. Fluffy all over rather than just fluffy ears. See, this anime caters to the type of person who likes the beast men to be all furry all over, while the animal girls to be just cute girls with tails and ears. I can understand that, to be honest. Of course, this is me who plays the Viera in Final Fantasy XIV, of course. Or, of course, I understand that. And yeah, she was a, a Mikote before, a cat girl. What are you going to do about it? But what I would do is I'd run a mile because Shibata is kind of worrying. He effectively almost man-rapes the guy. I mean, it's, it's not official man-rape, but you'd get caught up by the police for assault, definitely. And he may end up in some, some sort of register. And he threatens to do it to the girl as well, which I imagine there'll be plenty of dotions about in a few months' time as well. Although I imagine fan art's already been drawn. I mean, we meet our heroine, the wolf girl, Shigure. But she is being sold off by a rather unscrupulous looking guy to slave us. As it is what every self respecting pro wrestler of another world would do. He saves her. Except the fact that um, she wasn't being sold off in slavery. She just owed the guy a lot of money. And agreed if she didn't pay it, he could sell her. But no, he saves her. And Shigure likes him, even though he's kind of scary. And Shigure acts almost like the audience analogue. She has snide comments about pretty much anything else which happens in the anime. And they play off each other really nicely. To use the word parody in another world is a bit of a weird one. It doesn't feel like it is a parody, it just feels like it's just insane. But you can put it in a parody column if you really want to. If you do want to watch this, you can find it airing over at Funimation. Early start.
What a wonderful goddess you are. Beautiful, intelligent, super powerful. It's your turn to summon a hero into another world. Not this again. Okay, what's it going to be this time? Thankfully, Lestat is much more thoughtful about her process. She's got tons and tons of possible candidates. 99% of which are called Sato or various versions of that. Darn it. No Kazuma Sato here. I suppose he's got his own useless goddess to deal with, though, doesn't he? Lestat gets frustrated and ends up picking, by random, a really, really powerful hero. His stats are through the roof. He, she couldn't believe her luck. A level 1 without many stats? What's his name? Bell Cranel? No, his name's Seo Ryugin. Or oh, however you even pronounce it. We've got lots of users in the name. And she summons him into the other world to go and fight on this super powerful S class world. Really powerful demon king in this world, it seems. And that's why her, the number one ranked goddess, has been given leave to go and summon a hero to help her in this other world. She summons him and says, okay, let us begin. We'll teleport into this other world and defeat the Demon King. Which says, no. Why do more people say that? Oh, hero, summon to another world. Will you please save us? No, bugger off. But yeah, he doesn't say no because he doesn't want to. It's no because he's not really ready for it. He needs to do push-ups first and sit-ups and weight lift and exercise and make sure he's leveled up high enough. Because he is a cautious hero. This hero is overpowered, but overly cautious. And that's one thing she misread on his bio. But he is impossibly cautious. And his start is a very nice goddess. She's very calm, very graceful. But even she gets pissed off by this guy. He spends weeks and weeks and weeks just levelling up, just doing, just doing sit-ups and push-ups in his room. Obviously it's pining for the old days of how many dumbbells can he lift, aren't we all? But eventually, he comes out, instead of being level 1, he's now level 15. No idea what maximum level is. Is there a maximum level? If not, he'll probably try and get there anyway. And he's got two super powerful abilities. And eventually, after more wrangling, she managed to actually get him into the world, where they work for a beginner village. Now this isn't a beginner village with just a basic adventurer's guild and a succubus lair. This is a beginning village with just townspeople going about their day-to-day -day business, being accused of being bad guy is disguised. The kid walks up to him. I'm half expecting him to kick the kid. Thankfully he doesn't. This is not that type of anime. It's very similar to that type of anime, but it's not quite there yet. When given a charm, is this charm cursed? No. It's a flower and a bookmark a kid gave you. It's not cursed. To be fair, it probably is actually, but yeah. And so these are adventures of Seiya and his useless goddess. Well, I'm going to call her useful because it's Akito Yosaki. I of course like this goddess. It's the first time I've heard in a role like this in a long time actually. We used to see in these roles way too much. We used to see her in the cute ditzy roles like this. Although this is more beautiful ditzy. But more recently she's been in the more mature roles. But I for one am welcoming her back in this manic type role. And I'm looking forward to a lot more Akito Yosaki in future in this episode as well. Because I like this one. It's It's got its faults. It's a bit manic. It's trying too much. Our main characters are going to get very annoying very quickly, but I'll keep watching it for the start because this one's having over at Funimation. Matsu Uano is an avid reader. We know that purely from the anime, we don't actually get to see her in this first episode. We just see her being reborn in another world. I'm out of here. Another world anime? That's three and four. Three of the first four episodes of a season are Isekai series. What is this, Isekai season? But at least for Isekai we're getting a moment of all interesting. We're not just straightforward, loser gets teleported to another world anime. We got a pro wrestler, we got an overly cautious guy, and now we got a bookworm, because Urano is very much a bookworm. And so when she's reborn, well, tra transported, reborn, she re enters into the life of mine, a young girl in a very, very old style history. Reborn into a world where there seemingly are no books. And she just goes out looking for books. She 
she first looks at the house in a I think in an adorable situation where okay I need to get look around this room for bugs. There's no bugs here. Okay, I need to get out of this room. But the door's too big, I can't get out. But I'm gonna get out, books are worth it. I'm gonna leave this room, I'm gonna find a book. I'm gonna explore this house, look for books everywhere. Books are worth it, and there's no books. But we get to know mine. Mine is the girl who Arano has become. I'll call her mine from now on because calling her Arano is a bit weird. And she's a bit distressed to be in this young girl's body in this world without books. But she's sort of accept, expect, accepted it. She's there now, she might as well make the most of it. Sickly girl doesn't really do much, but she's cute about it. She has a sister, and sister sees something weird about her because she still, suddenly started acting weird. She wants to put her hair up on a bun, but she can't because children aren't allowed to do that, apparently. So she puts it up into a little half bun, which her sister then tells her. It looks like she's, her hair's got a splinter. It kind of does, but it's cute. I don't, I'll give her that pass. She then goes out with her mum. She then goes out with her mum to go shopping because she, while she's not interested in shopping, She's interested in looking around town, seeing whether or not she can find any books, because books are worth it. And going around the market, she doesn't find books, but she does find the butchers selling chicken, hanging up. Imagine being a young girl and seeing chicken just hanging up in a market, and you're not used to it. It was going to make anyone crazy, especially when you see a butcher with a live chicken, and whoosh, dead chicken. Yeah, that kind of put her over the edge. So she rests. She finds out, finds a shop she can rest in while her mum goes shopping. And on the counter, in a glass case, out of reach, out of sight, is a book. A big book, but a book. She's told she can't touch it. It'd be dangerous for her to touch it. It would be, she'd run off of it. But there's a book there, there's books in this world. Turns out this is a world pre-printing press. Books have to be copied out by hand, so only the rich can actually ever own books. The only reason why that book is there is because the Noah warned it off. And so she's got hope, books do exist. There is writing, there's words. She just has to try and find them. But she's from a poor family now. She's just a poor girl from a poor family. So this is her bookworm rhapsody. At the end of the episode, she comes to a conclusion. You know what? There's no books here. Let's make some. And so we get our premise. Young girl from another world. In another world with no books. Despite the fact she loves books. She's going to make them. And this is going to be her adventure in doing so. I mean, that is not some hero being transported to another world to save it. This is not some pro wrestler going around feeding up all the beast men in the world. This is a young girl who likes books. And who can argue with that? I can't. If you do want to watch a sentence of a bookworm, it's airing over on Crunchyroll. Well, those shows were out of this world, weren't they? Well, three of them were, at least. Or should that be in another world? Not a bad start to a season though, is it? What do you think? Let me know in the comments. And join me next time as I look at four more new shows. So until then, thanks for watching. Bye bye.